Hello everyone, Kurds up here. So I decided to make this quick little video and what to bring if you, and how to get set up if you want to go off-site and do imaging and also how to use this uh, ASI Air Live feature. So I wanted to test it out recently and with our astronomy club that I'm with, we have a public meetings every once in a while. And so I decided to bring this and I was, I was gonna use the ASI Air and I was gonna use the uh, my little tablet like I normally do and just show pictures using the live feature. And it worked, and it worked really well, but I had a couple issues to, uh, that I was able to solve and everything worked beautifully after that. Anyways, I'm Kurt Zepatello, and you're watching AstroQuest One. Okay, before you go in the field, one thing you definitely want to do is make sure everything runs properly in the field. And so you want to connect it up before you go out in the field. And I'll show you how I do that and what I use for my power when I'm in the field. Okay, long ago I decided to get a little cooler that would house my battery. And I usually just store everything in inside that. I actually little, cut a little hole in here that I can... Um, put the wires through so I can actually close it and keep it nice and containerized. I also keep all these wires, that, uh, connectors, cigarette lighter connectors and adapters inside this cooler all wrapped up and labeled so I can take it in and out for ease. And usually I bring power strips just in case I do end up having a place where I can plug it into as well. So since I do all this, you might ask, well, what kind of issues did I have uh, that night? Well, the first issue was relatively simple and I was able to fix it quite easily after about 15 minutes of trying to find out what the problem was. But uh, it, can, it was actually this battery that did it. This battery right here is very old. It's over five years old. I shouldn't have been using it anyways, but I plugged it in to my Pegasus power box with a, uh, an adapter, adapter goes on to here and then it uh, plugs right into the power box. And it went on, but it didn't stay on, it kept clicking. So I, when I was testing it at home at first, I did a real quick test. I just tested it and made sure the light went on and then I turned it off and I said, oh great, everything works. But when I got to the field and really tried to use it, it was just, it, it went on like I just described, but then it was just clicking and clicking and kept clicking and made a clicking sound so I thought oh my god was something broke with my brand new mount the AM3 and uh turns out after I was hemming and hawing with it I actually I was able to there, we had a power source an outlet that I was able to plug all the stuff into that and everything worked perfectly or at least that portion worked perfectly so yeah this battery I'm going to give it at the flip it's it's no good I'll do some proper recycling with it, uh, take it to the battery shop or whatever. You'll notice I, I did have another battery in there, so I because I knew this was old, so I, I purchased this battery like a couple months ago. I thought this was happen this would happen. I should have known. Well, for those of you that are wondering what all this gadget is, I actually made this. I went to a battery shop and they had these little attachments. So basically this screws into the terminals and I can actually snap this in place and then that snaps into the cigarette lighter. It makes it very secure so uh, you have one less thing to break off but like, so you don't have to clip the terminals on the battery. So anyways, that's what this is. I'm going to connect this up to that new battery that I was talking about. Okay, I'm happy to say everything's working perfectly. I'll show you how it's all connected up right now. So here's the new battery I have connected up to my little uh, adapter and it connects into this cord. This is the Pegasus Pocket Power Box cord and I have it labeled too. I, I'd advise you to label all your connectors uh, with a little label maker or something like that. And this power, this Pegasus po Power Box connects well, everything is connected up to that. So I got my ASI Air connected up to the power box. You can actually put dew heaters on the power box if you want. And the my new AM3 is connected up to the 
power box and it's working perfectly now that lights on and there's no clicking what happened before is with the old battery this thing would go it was going on and off and it was making this clicking sound it was it kept going click 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 and i was very scared thinking that boy i wonder what i did to my mount but it turns out it was just a bad battery okay now what i like to do and i think a lot of people do this too they like to keep as much stuff together so you don't have to break it down in the field at nighttime and it's really easy to set up in the field at nighttime so here's what i have so i've got like a, a little rubber made box and i have the whole thing lined with some of this type of packing material and i have more of it another layer of bubble wrap to keep it upright and i have I actually have some more bubble wrap that i would put on the end before i'd go traveling but it's pretty pretty secure and everything's all together all the wires are uh, together so all i have to do is pretty much take this out and put it onto the mount and then just connect one or two wires up to the mount and the power source, which sits down at the bottom, and I'm, I'm all set uh, to start imaging. So it makes it really easy. Oh, one other thing, you may have noticed my addition. I, I bought that extension for this, this setup. And yeah, it's, it's needed because it sits really low without that extension, but now it's, it's, it's really nice. And it's really, really solid. I, I'm very impressed with it, so. Okay, so for the last part of this video, I was gonna show you how to do the live stacking or how I did it. And I'll go over the other problem that I had. So the first problem, I diagnosed it. I know exactly what, ha what happened, it was a bad battery. This next problem, I still don't quite know what the cause of the issue is, but I'll, I'll go over that when I do the live stacking, which is gonna be another night. It's cloudy out right now, so who knows when the rest of this video will get done. Okay, folks, so it looks like it's gonna be a clear night, so I might do some imaging, and I've got my setup all, all set up. What exactly went wrong? Well, the other problem that I had, well, it would concern this, my trusty Rusty tablet. What I normally would run the ASI Air with, it just kept clonking out. I don't understand what happened. It kept disconnecting. It kept connecting, and it looked like it was gonna start working, and then it just disconnected. And when I was out in the field, uh, some other person there was mentioning, hey, you know what? Go on to the 5G network rather than the 2.4G, what I was using. So I did that, and that still didn't totally solve the problem. And then he suggested use my phone, which is what I'm using to film this with. So I just uh, I downloaded it on my phone and was started using that, and it worked fine the whole night on 5G. So I'm going to attempt to use my trusty, rusty tablet again here at home maybe it just works better at home for some reason but i don't know whatever it is we'll see anyway having said that i'm going to do some normal imaging i've, I've been working on this project for uh, another project for quite a while i'm gonna continue with that and when i'm done with that project when the moon starts coming up i'll do a quick tutorial on doing the live stacking feature okay folks well i'm outside and my and my tablet seems to be working fine, so I still don't know why it wasn't working in the field. Anyway, so I'm going to do a quick polar alignment like I normally do. If I was in the field just doing observing, the polar alignment wouldn't matter so much. I can do a real quick one. But I am going to be imaging tonight, or at least to start off with. So I'm going to do a pretty good polar alignment, or a decent one. And then after I'm done, then I'm going to do the quick little live view demo. Okay, see you later. Howdy folks, I must really be wimping out these days. I'm gonna do this whole thing from inside my house. So I just got done with the, of the Cocoon Nebula. So now I'll just show you how to work the live view. I'll do one, one site. I'm gonna do it from my house. My setup's right outside and, uh, but yeah, I just don't wanna go outside because it's really cold right now. Okay, so here I go. Okay, so I'm, Done with my object, I'm gonna go to, so we're gonna go to preview. And I'm just gonna take a quick shot and see what's going on. Okay, I'm still on the Cocoon Nebula. But let me uh, turn off 
guiding because I do not think I well actually I'll just leave guiding on see see what happens. So what you want to do for live view, you come over to the preview window and you notice you have all these little things that you can do, but you just press live view. So it's pretty simple. And then you press the three buttons and you got all these things. You can do you can have the live view do lights, you can have it do flats, darks, or bias frames if you want. And then what it will do when it does the live view, it'll actually subtract the flats out while it's collecting. So you can do really, really good uh, live view images uh, if you want. I'm not going to do that for this demo. I'm just going to go to live view. So what you do is you come over here and you can have it, you have these options like save every frame when stacking. That means you can keep this live view data and you can actually do some processing afterwards. Eh, there's a Press the button, I'll do it just for giggles anyways. And right now I've got it set for 10 minutes. Yeah, might as well leave it for 10 minutes. And But you can change that and you can have it do 30 second shots or 60 second shots. Maybe I'll do a 60 second shots. Okay, done. And save it. Okay, and then what you would do is you'd wanna go to the object and I can actually stay on this cocoon nebula or I can go somewhere else and maybe I'll go somewhere else just for giggles let's see I'm gonna go to you do it the normal with like a preview mode go to and you can have it come over here that's what I've been doing let's have it go to NGC 281 and here we are the Pac-Man nebula I'm gonna see what this thing looks like so I'm going to click this, press go to. Okay, and I will take a quick five second shot. Okay, it's right in the center. I can barely see it. And I want to go back to that live view business. I'll go press live. And let me see if my input is saved. Yep, there were 60 second uh, exposures. 10 minutes and I'm going to save every frame. So I'm going to save this and I'm going to start it. Here we go. Okay, so you can actually use this for doing outreach. And that's what I did the other night when I was uh, a couple a couple weeks ago when I went out and did this. I just was bouncing from different objects and doing like 10 minute exposures on them. And this worked pretty well. The idea was I was going to use my tablet but unfortunately I had problems with this and so I ended up using my phone but it still worked pretty well and I always just went bouncing around uh, for various objects Ooh, look at that just a one minute shot awesome okay so that was a one minute shot and it's gonna do another one and it's gonna stack it automatically so that's what's really really neat about this so it already looks really good with a one minute stack imagine what it's gonna look like a two minute it gets progressively better and better and better so that's the beauty of this live stacking feature so you can, that's why i was saying you can do it um if for regular imaging or you, like i said you can do it for outreach it works really well okay there's two stacks and it got a little bit better less a little bit less noise better image and we'll see what three stacks looks like Okay, folks. Well, in my opinion, this image looks fantastic. It's unbelievable that it's only a 10 minute uh, stacking. What's also really neat is I didn't take any flats or darks with this thing. So this is just collecting images in itself. So for outreach purposes, this is, this is great. Anyways, I'll be back with some closing remarks in a minute. Okay, folks. Thanks for tuning in to this somewhat disjointed video. My purpose was just to cover three main points. One, make sure you test everything fully before you go into the field. Number two, try to keep things together as much as possible so you can easily 
set it up and take it down in the evening. And number three, this live stacking feature works really well. It works well if you want to collect images because you can see how the image is progressing through the night or if it's um, if you got some type of capturing difficulties. But it also works really well for outreach. I was able to successfully go to numerous different objects and show people what they look like uh, right in the field. It was really worked quite well. Of course, I would have liked to have done it with my tablet, which was given a bigger field of view, but the phone worked fine. I don't. I still have never really fully identified what the problem was with my tablet. Could be that's old too. I mean, it's that that tablet's at least five years old, so might have been that. Anyways, thank you very much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.